Hey everybody, my name is David. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. So today, I'm going to show you how I take a small brisket and I'm going to slow cook it in my Instapot. You're talking one of the juiciest, most tender cuts of meat when I'm done and it will blow your mind. So right here is a list of what you'll need to make your rub because you're gonna have to have a rub to rub on the meat before you set it in the refrigerator and I'm gonna go over real quick what those items are in more detail. So first you're gonna need some black pepper about a tablespoon and a half or more if you like pepper. You're gonna need some dark chili powder two tablespoons. You'll need some paprika another two tablespoons. You'll need some onion powder two tablespoons, some sea salt, um, you can use about a tablespoon, garlic powder, another two tablespoons, chipotle chili pepper, two tablespoons, and ground cumin. So what I'm doing now is I am getting ready to cut some of the fat off of this cut of meat. Now this cut of meat came from a cow that we ordered and it doesn't look like your traditional brisket because it doesn't have the whole fat cap as you can see me pointing out here. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to trim just some of the fat off. You don't, know, you don't want to ever get rid of all the fat just because of the flavor that the fat brings. So I'm just going to minimize some of it here. Okay, so now I just got me some paper towels so you can use a rag and I'm just kind of tapping on the cut of meat just to try to absorb some of the moisture and the blood that may still be on it. Trying to still cut and trim off some of the fat. And like I said again, you don't want to cut too much off. So now the rub that you should have already made, what you're going to do is you're just going to sprinkle it liberally over all the meat. What you want to do is you want to try to cover every square inch of this meat, the front, the back, and the sides. And then once you shake it onto the cut of meat, take your hand and kind of press it down. Make sure that it adheres to the meat. It should, but just kind of press it down with your hands as you're doing it and feel free to use little rubber gloves if you choose to I like working with my hand I like being able to feel what I'm doing so that's your preference but again as you can see I'm still continuing to sprinkle it in all the cracks and crevices to make sure that it's completely covering every ounce of the meat flipping it over and about to do the same thing even over the fat that you see here the fat cap portion cover it liberally or I'm sorry generously and then this container that you see me using this is just an old sea salt container that I have that I can keep my rub that I make inside of so when I make my next brisket probably next week haha I'll have the leftover rub and I'm not wasting it and you can see as I turned it over there's still some areas where it's kind of come off so I'm putting more rub on and tapping it down as you can see here so after this I'm going to grab me some saran wrap two or three long pieces, overlap them, and I'm going to take my cut of meat and I'm going to lay it in the center of the saran wrap and I'm going to wrap it. Try to wrap it completely 
so that it seals so I can cover the entire piece of meat. Again, just take your saran wrap and try to cover all of the meat. Try to wrap it tight. And once you get it wrapped completely tight, you're going to take the meat and you're going to place it in the refrigerator. You can refrigerate this up to 24 hours if you choose to um, because I want to get this thing started sooner or later. I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for at least a minimum of two hours. All right, so now I'm going to be mixing my broth that I want to put into the Instapot. So half a cup of warm water, one beef bouillon cube, and you want to let these things sit and soften in the hot or warm water just because they're really hard initially. You could probably crush it, but just let it sit in the water. It's not going to hurt your thing. Now I like to take two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar and again it doesn't have to be exact as you can see here I'm not measuring it but for the purposes of this video just about two tablespoons should be good next you want to grab some Worcestershire sauce and that's I think that's how you say it it's not Worcestershire but anyway Two to four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I usually use about three. As you can see, I am perfectly measuring it. <laughs> Again, it's simply to your taste. Uh, I like to use mustard. I sometimes use Dijon or just regular yellow mustard. About a tablespoon of mustard as well. And then if you have any of that store-bought minced garlic, you know the kind that comes in the jar that's already minced, or you can use fresh garlic. I like using about a teaspoon of that and then I like to mix it up then I take some ginger about a tablespoon of ginger and I squirt the ginger into the bowl as well stir that up if you have a whisk you might want to grab a whisk and do the same So right now, the bouillon cube should be soft enough to where I can take my whisk or a fork or a spoon and kind of break it up to where it dissolves in the half a cup of warm water. And then I'm just going to pour these two things into my Instant Pot coming up here shortly. So now it's been two hours, so I'm removing the brisket from the refrigerator. I'm going to unwrap it here, as you can see. Now you can use avocado oil or olive oil. We tend to use avocado oil more because it has a higher smoke point than olive oil does. So you want to pour it into your Instapot or similar, about two tablespoons, enough to almost coat the bottom. And then what you're going to do is most of these Instapots have a saute or a sear setting. So you want to sear the meat on both sides. And then once you're done searing it, you want to put it in the Instapot, lock the lid, and let it cook for 8 to 10 hours. And again, don't forget to pour your broth in the Instapot before you slow cook it. Okay, now it's the next morning. 
and we are removing the lid to see what our creation looks and smells like. Oh man, I wish you guys could smell this right now. It smells amazing. So I'm taking the fork just to see how tender it is. And I tell you, I feel like I'm sticking a knife into butter. It's going in so easily. This thing is going to be so tender and juicy. I can't wait to taste it. Look at the meat coming off. Wow. So what I like to do, since I'm not cooking it on a grill in charcoal, I like to put it under the broiler for a couple of minutes on high just to char the top of it. Now I'm telling you now, make sure you watch it because it will burn quickly. You want to remove it from the oven. As you can see, it's already charred. What I do is I do one side, then I flip it over. The first side I did on high and it got a little browner than I would have liked because I left the room. But then I did the other side on low and just left it in there a little bit longer and it came out great. I don't even mind the little bit of char that you can see, but look at how the fork just goes in like a knife into soft butter. Man, I can't wait to take this. So what I'm doing now is I am wrapping the meat and I'm going to let it rest about 45 minutes or so. which is vital before you begin to even attempt to cut meat. You want to let those juices just stew before you even think about cutting it. So now I'm cutting into it. Now watch as I push down on the meat. Look how juicy this brisket is. I mean, and this one actually cooked longer than it should have. This thing went for about 12 or 13 hours. Again, Hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please drop in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.